It's a swing and a miss in the Atari archive with this look at home run. I don't think it's a secret that baseball as a sport doesn't lend itself well to early video game consoles. One team is always going to have nine players on the field, while the other is dealing with their batter along with any base runners they might have on the field at the moment. Meanwhile, the consoles in question typically are limited in resolution, controller input options, and memory. But that didn't stop programmers and developers from trying their best to translate the popular sport to the video game machines of the day, and eventually they succeeded in making some really good renditions of America's pastime. Unfortunately, Atari's home run, released by Sears as Simply Baseball, is more of an iterative step on that journey rather than one of the benchmarks. Programmer Bob Whitehead, who wrote Blackjack and Starship for the initial VCS lineup, decided to try his hand at tackling baseball next. Whitehead was always a sports fan, but by his own admission, he was never very good at playing them himself. But he was one of Atari's standout early programmers who was getting a handle on the odd capabilities of the VCS and decided to give it a shot. He certainly wasn't the first person to write a baseball video game. Andy Modla had written a rendition for the RCA Studio 2 that had come out in 1977, as did a version of the game for the Channel F the same year. And going back even earlier, John Metzler wrote an arcade baseball game for the company Ramtech, which would eventually be licensed out to Midway as the 1976 release Tornado Baseball. Atari's Dave Shepard even wrote his own rendition of an arcade baseball game called Flyball. But while arcade games were popular sources of inspiration for Atari's developers, Whitehead said he hadn't really seen any of these titles before starting work on what would become Home Run. And Home Run is absolutely constrained by the VCS's limitations. While you do get a rendition of the baseball diamond, depending on the game type, the fielding team only has one, two, or three players at a time, multiplexed into a row, like the triple biplanes in combat. The batting team does show players moving between bases, and even has the characters on base, but you have no options to try and steal a run. On top of that, the game suffers from some serious flickering while runners are on the move. This technique would alternate which sprites would appear on the line each frame, which allows for more sprites than the game could normally show at once. But it was also a trick that Whitehead disliked, a factor in his decision to feature almost no flickering if he could help it in future games. Since fielding is functionally non-existent, the gameplay loop is a bit different from the real sport. The pitcher will throw the ball at the batter, where the usual array of fouls, strikes, and balls are pretty well represented. The player can use the controller to shift the ball left and right, and even vary the speed after it's been thrown. On a hit, the pitcher and any fielders must run to catch the ball. If it's caught, they then have to physically touch the base runners to take them out. There's no throwing to other bases, there's no catching a fly ball to get an automatic out, just racing around the field. It actually kind of works. Home Run takes the basic idea of baseball being a duel between the pitcher and the batter, and makes that the entire game. The difficulty switches allow for changing the speed of the fielders, which can end up making it trickier to get outs with a single person, but basically balances the game out when you've got three, particularly if the game type has the fielders spread out rather than bunched together. Finally, Whitehead included a surprisingly competent computer opponent in the game just in case the player couldn't find a human to play against. He said it was tricky to implement a computer opponent in the first set of VCS games, but with improved development tools and more familiarity with the platform, plus having relatively simple games, it was manageable to program out a computer team for Home Run. While all this makes Home Run sound like an oddball version of the sport, Whitehead's solutions weren't that far off of what other home baseball developers came up with to get around the input or memory limitations each competing console had. The Studio 2 baseball game has three mitt-shaped fielders the pitching team can control, though they can only move up and down and would only successfully catch a ball if it lands in the appropriate part of the sprite. Whiffing a catch meant the batter gets runs onto the bases. On top of that, it lacks any real way to control the pitch other than speed. Meanwhile, the Channel F does have players at the bases, but still only allows direct control over the outfielders. Similar to the VCS game, it features pretty robust control over the pitching speed and direction even after throwing the ball. You can bean the batter and give them a run if you're not careful. The 1978 line of consoles brought their own halting advancements to baseball video games too, with gameplay improvements that put them a step above home run. Bally's professional arcade console was arguably the most powerful machine on the market at the time, and its port of Midway's Tornado Baseball game is a standout in speed and presentation, even if it plays pretty similarly to Fairchild's Channel F rendition. Magnavox's Odyssey 2 baseball game, released that fall, 
allows for the ball to even just land on the field, requiring fielders to pick it up and throw it to the baseman. Finally, the APF MP1000 baseball game features some of the same bells and whistles as the Bally and Channel F versions, but it includes a computer opponent, the only one of these games besides Home Run to do so. But truly the gold standard for early home console baseball games was reached with Mattel's 1980 Major League Baseball game for their Intellivision console. MLB doesn't feature a computer opponent, but thanks to the keypad and 16 directional disc on the Intellivision controllers, it allowed for a more realistic take on the sport, one where all the players on the field can be useful and controlled by the player. Batters can swing for the fences or even just opt to bunt, adding new strategy to video baseball games. The difference between Mattel's game and what had come before was so stark that Mattel made direct comparisons to Home Run a part of their advertising campaign. Here's an easy question for you. Which of these games is the closest thing to the real thing? A. In television Major League Baseball. B. Atari Baseball. Here they are Home again. Run itself was the centerpiece for Atari's own late 1978 advertising campaign. But Major League Baseball's release meant that the game was generally side-eyed in the game's press from 1980 on. For example, the game had a fairly positive write-up in Video Magazine's Summer 1979 Arcade Alley column, which provided some advice on how to play well and beat the computer. Come the June 1982 Electronic Games article about baseball video games, though, written by some of the same people, the writers note that it doesn't really give the feeling of real sports action, relegating it to the role of benchwarmer among the baseball genre. Around June 1981, Atari started trying to move copies of Home Run as free games to anyone who purchased two other sports titles in the VCS, golf and basketball. The company ultimately seemed to have largely phased out Home Run in its advertising campaigns sometime in 1982 in favor of their new, more realistic Real Sports Baseball, which launched that October. Despite that frankly superior version of baseball being on the market, home runs seemed to stick around in some capacity as Atari continued selling tens of thousands of copies of the game through 1989. Despite Whitehead's first foray into sports games on the VCS being one that he looks back on as being clunky, it can make for a pretty quick and entertaining take on the sport with a second player, albeit one that is not terribly baseball-like. Whitehead would go on to develop a few more VCS sports games before moving over to the Commodore 64 computer and designing the seminal baseball game Hardball, proving that you just might need to take another swing to land that home run. Next time, it's the first game from another story to Atari developer, and an odd one at that.